The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman sitting for Larry Pesavento. Larry's away, and I have the good fortune to be able to sit in for him. So this is Trade What You See, and I'm usually the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour, noon till 1 p.m. Eastern Time here at TFNN on market days. And I'm also the author of the opening call, the daily newsletter, comprehensive newsletter. goes out daily by 8 o'clock, 8.10. It's my entire series of charts have gone out so we're looking at the dow up 270 in the futures this is going to be very important for three reasons number one there was a rectangle formation that had formed and for weeks and weeks we've been stuck in that range and in the real terms let me just go to the dow this is the the actual contract itself this is the dow uh, 30 because there's nothing happening right now because it's pre-opening at 9 30 there'll be a spike up and if it goes over 25 oh, sorry 26 514 26 it starts a leg deal let me just quickly say in the chapman wave methodology i look at only three patterns straight up straight down arch formation cup formation you can get a combination i make it in red because if on the left side in the uh, what i call the dreaded h the low lowercase h the left side low is taken out decisively with poor technicals it can keep coming down and on the upside if you break out to the upside after a cup formation or inverted y that's very positive so straight line up or down that's one arch formation could be inverted v that's two cup or v-shaped formation that is three and then of course you can get a combination so with that said what are we looking at we're looking at a series of lowercase h's as h goes to a lowercase m and then it starts to turn around this third arch is the, always the most i we're very fortunate we managed to get the low in june the exact day of the low we managed to get the exact within seven points of the high of the 16th of july for subscribers going short i had said that i think that this is going to be a tough one to time the the uh, the low because of the patterns that are forming um i know dave white did a fantastic job he called it beautifully to the low and uh, what we're looking at here is that because of this breakout we're starting to get this leg d now let me go to the continuous contracts and we're talking apples to apples this is out of this exact moment the futures up 267 you can see you've got the uh, d leg d the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, is good. It's not any, it's not great, but it's very good right now. Stochastic is over 80%. I like that at 82%. That is very uh, important. Now, what is also um, what I'm really looking at here is this this cup formation in the Chapman wave. It has what I call left side right side price time match. But what I really want to look at was this line here. This is what's called right there make it green chap wave inside wedge target repellent line so we've gotten right to this line today's close is going to be very important for three reasons as i said number one is you've broken out of that rectangle number two is in the lowercase h when you get to the third arch formation which was forming here if that reverts to a cup formation you have to look at the technicals to say, now have you raised the support? In other words, are you making higher lows and higher highs? Because that's the definition of a, of a bull phase. And if so, where are the support levels? Well, the first support level is that the 9 and, and 14 period moving averages around about 26,260. And then the orange one right here, this is the 200 period exponential moving average of 26,890. Most importantly, what we're looking at is where do we close? I'm going to talk about that. Uh, so, so that's the whole second phase. The third part of it is within the context of looking at the shorter term, I always have to look at the weekly chart. You can see this weekly chart. The MACD is still very negative. Stochastic has turned up, but it's down 52%. So there's a chance that I'm not thinking that we go back to the 50, uh, 25,000 
uh, level. But we can go down into the mid 25,000s again. Look, this is a whole series of news events. There's nothing really that's happening. Nothing really has changed. But something very important has changed in the psychology of the market. In the psychology of the market, we've had almost a, a, a hate relationship to this mega bull market. I've been considering that this is a consolidation phase and it will make much higher highs later on. And the silence of the bull market is just deafening because few, few people even want to talk about making money in the market. Whereas at new all time highs or two, three percent of new all time highs, normally you'd get people just talking about the stock market, how fantastic it is. My impression for a long time, and I, there's no real way to define this or even to get a sense of whether this is a correct definition or not. But my sense is, that there's been, because of the media and the plethora of negative coverage of the president, that mentioning stocks would be like mentioning being positive Donald Trump. And nobody wants to get into that conversation at work or at any, in, in family events or anything. So there's just this deathly silence. And that's the biggest bull thing that we could ever have right now. So later on, I think we go to all-time highs. I don't think it's in this particular phase right now, but it, it might be. We'll see. So most importantly, how does the sideways consolidation continue? Well, have a look at this. The S&P, let's do the E-mini right now. The E-mini is trading up. 27 at 29.65. How many 25 point moves up and down have we seen in the E mini in the last month? It's amazing. But this is a breakout of that downtrend line. This is very important. Where it closes is going to be important. Stochastics at 83%. I like that. MACD is good. The weekly chart is a little bit better than the Dow's, but the technicals are still not great. However, look how often it's hit this 200 period moving average and rallied very sharply. So we'll just look at this and say on a shorter term basis, 29.73, 29.78 is probably going to be strong resistance. Let me just look at my Chapman Wave automated resistance points. Let me go to this here, ESU19. That is the E mini. Yep, right there, 29.80 to 29.82. 28.89, a lot of resistance, automated resistance points. Let's look at the Dow. Let's go to the automated one. YM, YM is 26.7. So right, we're coming right into strong resistance within about 20 or 30 points of the Dow. Let's look at the NQ, which is the, the uh, trading vehicle. No, that is the uh, futures for the uh, index 100. And it's right in resistance right now. So I think we are, we're about to bump into resistance. But wait a minute. You can't just look at one thing. Look at bonds. James Bonds. Look at the bonds. You've made a peak right here at the one, oops, at the 165, 166 and 430 seconds was the, now it's the close. I want the high. 166 and 25, 30 seconds. Just missed it here. 166, 23, uh, 30 seconds. This weekly could be making a Chapman wave two bar reversal. And that says when there are fractional differences between the left side bar and the right side bar, especially if it's slightly lower, be careful because if there's a pullback below a key support level, in this case, it's going to be a support at. On the 23rd, the low of 162 and 530 seconds is a continuous contract. That's going to be a negative. If you look at the TLT, it shows you the same sort of thing here. It's down 1.83 at 145.60. It made an all-time high. No, sorry, I shouldn't say all-time high. It made a, a monthly high and a daily weekly high right here at 148.90 on the 28th. Pulling back some. So I wanted to show you that. I also wanted to show you. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS profile scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Everyone, we're back. Basil Chapman sitting here for one and only Larry Pesavento, who well deserved break he's taking, or I think he's uh, uh, traveling somewhere. So the, the uh, TLT is down 1.86 at 145.67. Look at this powerful leg in the monthly chart. Look at this beautiful cup. Remember, we're only looking at cup formations or arch formations. Beautiful arch formation, retest that 111 right on the 200-period uh, moving average in the monthly, and then spirals to the upside. I call this in the in my in my, my technique in the Chapman Wave methodology between the MACD and stochastic. I call this uh, I call this a squash. There are a couple of reasons for it, but most importantly, what it does is it says there could be a very quick move between from a peak A to a B to a C, and then there's then the stochastic, which is at 95% and really strong, starts to pull back a little bit, and it takes a little time before it makes the D and the MAG D is the one. So the torque of the move to the upside in bonds was created by the stochastic spiraling from uh, 20, uh, just under 20% to way over 80%, in fact, to 95%. And then the momentum has to be taken over. The overdrive goes from the, the fast moving average, this green line in the MACD in the monthly. So this says that the international pressure to, to have lower rates is so so big that there should be even lower rates to come. But in the meantime, we're looking at some kind of a pullback. And that's what I mean by a short-term tidal change. And if you look at that, and if you look at the dollar, look at the dollar. The dollar is a fantastic move uh, for, for subscribers. We've been long since April of 2018 at 90.07. Via the UUP, it, gone to, it went to 99.37 just three days ago. Now it's down at 98.25. And this monthly chart shows this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone right there. We've pulled back. We're under that. I think we can consolidate. My biggest concern here is that we've gotten to leg D in the monthly chart by one day. That was the very first day of September, and doesn't matter. That means the whole month of September, you've got this leg D, and if by October we haven't come above 99.37, this is going to be a peak D, and at peak D, other things can happen. That's where deeper consolidations can occur. Look at the one that occurred in the dollar index at 103.82 back in January 
of 2017, slumps to the low of February of 2018 at 88.25. Um, in April, we go long, and we've been long since. And ever, ever since then, it's basically walked both the green line, that's the nine period moving average, and the black line, the 14 period moving average, use the 14 as a springboard. That's at 96.90. If in September we break under 96, call it 50, got to give it a little room. Let's get, call it 96.50, closes under there any week in September. Uh, then I think the dollar's in for much. And then the, the administration is getting kind of what it wants. And that could be very bullish for multinationals. We'll be watching this closely. Other thing I'm looking at here is how the I, how's the IR? No, no, I want to finish. The dollar we were looking at, I need to look at the euro, EUR, USD, the euro dollar currency pair. Look at the strong leg A to the upside. Let me just take that old A over there and put it over here. Um, nothing's going to happen unless the euro cracks the resistance level of 1.115. That's right there at the 14 period moving average. It needs to get to 11. I'd even put it at 112.10, somewhere in that range. And then I would say to you, OK, that allows the stochastic to turn down the weekly chart from the 22% level, start to get to the 27, 28% level. And that'll be a positive if the MACD can start to turn around. It's going to take a lot more for that MACD to get to go positive. So that's important. And the monthly chart is still looking just terrible for the euro. So I'm considering that this is a bounce. But it could be a pretty sharp bounce. After all, look at the British pound. We were talking about it yesterday. I was asked on my show about it. Now, see, yes, at 1.1965, the low that was made three days ago, because it had a, a, a perfect peak D in a very short time frame, in a very small range, big percentage, but small range, uh, going to the high that was made on the 27th of August, the British pound trading right now at 1.234, up 0.0124. Um, this is a big move. It's broken above that peak D. It went below the trough that was made on the 12th at 1.2033 in the continuous contract. And this weekly chart, for the first time, what I was saying is that the histogram is starting to improve in the weekly. The MACD is starting to try to turn up. Stochastic is turning up. This could be a move that says if the British pound can close any week over the next two weeks, above 1.245, first time closing over the 14 period moving average since it broke down back in May, the week of the 17th, when it was at 1.31. That'll say to me, especially with the doji candle of August, now above that candle, having gone below, this could be a big engulfing candle, that the currencies could be in play. And I have to put this into effect here. Uh, dollar, TRCCI. This is the commodity index. Look at this leg B to the upside after just being pummeled in the 440s down to the 370s in the commodity. This is the Reuters, the Thomson Reuters equal weighted commodity index. Let me just check on the name there. But I believe that's exactly what it's called. They, they've dropped the Thomson. That's what happens when you get taken over. Eventually, you lose your name. Look at this. Reuters equal. Look at this thing. Let me pull it back all the way. You remember Peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology, how important it is? Look, we saw that in the monthly chart, that peak, a major peak. Look at this, the high of April of 2011 at eight, 690, plummets down to a low of 351, almost cut in half, January of 2016, rallies quite nicely, has a peak E right there, Reuters Equal Weighted Commodity Index, has a high of, in May of 2000, he likes May, huh? May of 2018 at 432, and then it comes all the way back down to last month's low, which is at 374. So this is the first time I'm seeing something that says, yeah, commodities could have a, have a little bit of a rally. Hey, talking about commodities, this is Larry's show. He loves to look at commodities. Look at wheat. That's wheat. Looking at a leg A to the upside after a trough G. The MACD has had a, a nice divergence to the upside. So is the stochastic. So wheat at 4, 8, uh, 466, up six right now. If it can close about 473 in the next two days, two sessions, I should say, today's session and Friday, if it can close nicely above it, it says, hey, Good rally could take you to the 480s. Uh, that would be my first bigger goal. The, uh, soybean, soybean right now is trading. This is the continuous contract up one at 876 in leg B. Uh, in the daily, it needs a lot more work. It needs to climb 
oh, at least into the 885 area. Better, it better hold 884, 864, and corn, just corn. Corn is right there at 360, not too, not too much to see it, up two and a quarter, 360. This is the first time that I'm actually seeing the commodities. We were along the DBC, uh, DBC um, grain, uh, really basically a grain contract, uh, ETF, uh, for quite a while. We took some profits there. We haven't been in for ages. Now it says that there's a chance that you could start to see if the dollar starts to pull back deeper, that money could see a benefit. Let's see what happens to crude oil. It could benefit the commodities, but not gold. Yep, crude oil is now up 60 cents at 56.85, testing the range of this rectangle formation. If crude oil starts to close, it has to close two out of the next three sessions above 57.50. And then I think we've got a nice bounce coming in uh, crude oil. I'll be back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento, the one and only Larry Pesavento. I'll be back. Oh, it'll be the opening bell. As soon as we get back, it'll be the start of the day session. I'll be right back. The futures are up 285 in the Dow. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading in larry's first week alone he sent out 25 charts six videos and a full report to his subscribers in just one week if you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade then larry's service fibonacci 24 7 is something that you must try right now new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee with nothing to risk sign up now to larry pesavento's fibonacci 24 7 by visiting the front page of tfnn.com under trading newsletters the Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Trappin sitting for Larry Pesavento. The market has opened and the Dow is up 267. But look at bonds. Uh, TLT is down $1.79 at $145.64. Sounds like a lot, but it's just stuck in this range. I'm going to put in a rectangle formation here. Actually, this is one of those. Now I'm going to just stick with the rectangle formation right here. And I, all I can say to you is that if bonds in the next, by Wednesday of next week, 
If the TLT, that is the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF, if it is trading under 143, uh, let's say uh, below 142.70, I would have to say that there's a good chance that bonds are going to take a bit of a breather, that the TBT is going to start to move a little higher. It's up 56 at 23.70. That's the inversion. But the TBT really needs to spiral into the 24.70s. 24.58 was the high of the 23rd of 23rd. Yep, the 23rd of August, and it needs to do that. But until the TBT starts to trade between in the weekly chart between the pink nine period moving average and the black 14 period moving average 2568-2697 and holes in there for about a week a week's worth of closes in that range um, this just has to be treated as a bounce right now um, but my suspicion is that we've got a little bit of a tidal change here um, and it's going to allow the market to appreciate that many of the stocks are very uh, oversold. These are key American stocks. Let's just see what Caterpillar is doing right now. Caterpillar up nicely, up two at 121.17, was up at 173 back in January of 2018, plummeted to 112 in December. It was December, right? No, 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 there wasn't. December was the market low. It made its low in October. Yep, October 112.06 was the low. And then it pounces up to the 140s, slumps to the 111 area. And here it is at 121, up 10 points from the low. That's very good in leg B. Uh, let's see if this can last. It's going to be very important to see what happens. Let's see what Deer is doing. DE, so Caterpillar is doing nicely. Deer is up $1.32 at $1.5304. Let's see what my um, um, Chapman Wave Dow Quartet is doing, my so called index. You can't have an index with four stocks, but that's what we have. IBM. Very nice move up three at 139.28, still stuck in the range down at the bottom area. Uh, Triple M, let's see what that is up. Ooh, up 2.80. Very nice move, 162.77. Trying to come off the bottom. It has just been hammered. Uh, it's gone from the 187 most recent high back in 25th of July to the 154. I mean, that is 30 points. That is, what is it, about 27%. That's a, that's a big move down. So we're also looking at... Um, uh, UTX, which we had, got stopped out for a tiny little loss, and then bam, it spirals from the 125s that we were in. Now it's 132.82, up $1.77. Leg C, this is very good, still stuck in a range. If you look at the weekly chart, there's the lowercase h. Now I call this the Sears and Roebuck. There used to be the Sears Holdings made this pattern years and years ago, and I thought, hey, there's the dreaded h, the lowercase h. It holds the left side low, and then it makes a cup formation. The cup formation says it can actually start to trade back towards the old high. So at 132, 144.40 was the um, most recent high, which was just to, to, uh, 30, 35 cents away from the previous high of um, September of 2018. It goes down to 100, 44 points, 44 percent decline. And then it goes all the way back to 144.40. 30 cents higher in May, and then pulls back. So this is going to be very important. I think it's still going to consolidate a little longer. We'll see about that. And the final one, UTX, uh, what, what am I forgetting here? IBM, Triple M, UTX, oh, and Caterpillar, we just did. Okay, so that says that those really bad cyclicals, these are, these are the heavy-duty uh, international um, heavy-duty cyclicals. Um, it's good that they're rallying. It's really important that they're rallying right here. A um, couple of things. Let's look at the VIX index. The VIX right now is trading at. The VIX is down 86 cents at 16.47. If it gets into the 15s, that'll be support. I want to see where we close the day. The, I had said to subscribers, we could see some short covering at the beginning, so it goes even high, a little higher. And then we'll see if there's a dissipation of buying towards the end of the day getting a little bit very short-term oversold. But looking out, I must, I'm must. i really impressed. I'm impressed because let's just go to this chart right here. This is the Dow. This is a leg D up in the Dow daily. This is what we use here, what I show subscribers every single day. My thinking was that the 25,000s would be retested. 
I still think there's a good chance that at some point that this is just news. This is there's nothing here that's happening other than sentiment. So the actual news says that this whole area now it's a little raised. It's now like the 26,200 to 25,800. I wouldn't be surprised if some point if we retest that area. But this is really important. And what's also very important if you look at the 120 minute chart, we've just spiraled above. Chapman wave automated resistance, three automated resistance points. That becomes short term support, 26,571. We're 100 points higher than that at 26,688. A couple of questions I had, I thought I'd get to them right now. One of the things I was looking at, why I thought that there'd be another pullback into the 25,000s for the Dow was the IYT was not acting very well. Now, of course, it's acting very nicely. Today it's up three at 185.37. This is the uh, IYT is the, uh, the iShares transport, Dow Transportation Index. I don't know why we call it the Dow 30 because it's really just the 30. Uh, now the, um, it's not the Dow used to be made up of industrials. You can't tell me that uh, um, is, is Verizon industrial? Is Nike an industrial? Um, Home Depot is that an industrial? I suppose in a way you could call it. But uh, Apple, is that an industrial? So it's Adobe, uh, not Adobe, I'm talking about um, Microsoft. We're looking at uh, just a different uh, complexion completely. So Dow's up 321. That's really important. Couple of, a couple of questions I had. Would I just look at something like um, the hogs? Uh, yes, I'd say gone to a peak C. I see some resistance here. It's trading at 66.80 in the continuous contract, live hogs. MACD is good, stochastic is good, but the price hasn't really appreciated as it should. So I think it's going to be stuck between, it's at 66.77 right now. I think it's going to be stuck between the 65s and maybe the 68s in the shorter term before it really gets going. Um, question about uh, platinum. Platinum is looking amazing. Uh, it's gone to a leg C at 1,000.80. I did this yesterday. I said the 200 period moving average in the weekly, the orange chart right here. MACD strong, stochastic strong. But this says at 9.77, right now we're, at, we're down six at 9.77, having made a new recovery high of 1,000.80. That's going to be the benchmark because I, I could see, and I, I wanted to put a rectangle in here to say that there's a good chance that. Uh, platinum will trade between the 950 area and the 1000, maybe 1020 area. And that, that could be the trading band for now. If it goes much higher, that's going to be really important. Platinum, oh, platinum, let's see what General Motors is doing. Don't they use platinum for the automobiles? Yeah, General Motors is up 85 cents at 39.07. I like it. Isn't Barra meeting with Trump? I always chuckle because Barra was there through all the terrible times with GM and now she's leading GM. But they still don't produce quality cars. Consumer Reports has a reliability. Terrible. The Cadillac, very disappointing. I'll be back. Dow's at 341. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom 
Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Trapp and seeing for Larry Pizzaventa. You can see the two-minute chart is still very strong here in the E-mini and the 10-minute chart. I made that cup formation, made a little cup and handle, then broke out to the upside. Um, 29.69. Let me just see. I've got uh, resistance levels. We've just broken above that, 29.67. So, um yeah, I can see the 29, 71, 72 area as the, as the next area of uh, resistance. On the day, at any point, if there is a slide below 29.64, we're at 29.69 right now, on the very short-term basis, that says consolidation taking place. It would take a move below 29.58 to say, uh-oh, the high of the day is made. Now we're going to have a bit of a rest going to the next two days uh, as short covering is completed. We'll see what happens here. Now, um, General Motors, as I said, we're doing very nicely. I had a question about the um, XAL. XAL is the uh, airline index. It isn't showing very much. This is There are a couple of reasons why I was looking at the overall market to say that making new highs right now, I thought it would be a tough thing to do without further consolidation. I'm still feeling that way. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. But looking out, I do see that the Dow 28,000s, that's going to be a target. But most importantly, what happens in the shorter term is, is there new leadership? And if there is going to be new leadership, will the XLF start to participate, which it is today, the S&P financials up 50 cents at 27.40 leg C in the Chapman Wave daily. That, that weekly chart is still saying it's a weak weekly chart, and the monthly chart is sitting right on a down channel. I call this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone is trying to sneak above if it can get to the 2770s by friday afternoon going into monday that's going to be good if it pulls back again because bonds are started to uh, uh, rally further I don't think they can do that right now, but if they do, then then the financials are having some trouble. Goldman Sachs gaps up. It's up 4.5 at 206. Do you want to see gold, uh, Goldman? Um, I'd say above the 225 area would be a really strong action. It went to 222 on the 26th of July, peak F, and it, run, it pulls all the way back to 193. So now it's at 206. It's good action. That weekly chart, the technicals are okay. I, it really needs to get the next level on the upside just to see if it can get back to the 222 level. Will have to be the 213s. Let's see if it can do that. Goldman Sachs. Wait a minute. The SMHs. Semiconductor index, what a big move, up 3.55 right now at 120.10. It's Now it's a whisker away from the all-time high of 123.56. This is a, a peak B in the weekly and the monthly chart. Wow, does it go to leg C in the next week uh, into the 123.57 or higher area? 
it's looking very good. It, it was a sideways consolidation. I had drawn this in and shown subscribers over the weekend. I put an up arrow here if it can break into the 117s, and I put a down arrow if it breaks under 109s. But it's on the upside. Now it's making almost a cup formation. And this cup formation says very good action. Let's see if it's able to swing all the way to the 123.56 level in the next two, three sessions. This is a big positive. For me, this is very important because the semiconductors are in everything. They are just, it's so important. And I keep hearing that uh, the billing is still not great, but I've got a feeling that this is, a, it looks six months ahead and it, it, it screamed from the low of 80.71 in December to 120.71 in April um, even as the billings were still terrible, like minus 20% each month, and then it goes down to 98. That's a big pullback, 120 to 98. Huh. And then what does it do? It turns around and goes to 123. Now it's pulled back only to the 10, uh, 107 area, and we're looking at 120.03 uh, at this point. This is good action. And this is probably telling us that looking at the overall market, there are a lot better things happening that are being reported, and the semis could be it, that maybe the billings are starting to improve. I mean, they should, after all. The price can't just go away by itself without the billings. It, it did that for six months, seven months. I don't know if it can keep doing that, so this is a big positive for me, SMHs. Um, I like what I'm seeing right now. I think this is a really big positive. Uh, up. Huge gap from yesterday's close, just under 116, and now it's 120. Very good move. So um, I like that. That's the semiconductors. I had a question that was sitting somewhere. Uh, palladium, that's right, P-A-L-L, -L, palladium right now. I didn't do the notation. It had the peak D top right there with a down arrow. Uh, that was back in July, July the 20. No, July the 10th. It is 150.64. The continuous contract has a very sharp pullback to the 130.04 area on the 2nd of August. And now it's trading. Let me put an up arrow because we know that it's moving up. Higher highs and higher lows. Peak A, peak B, peak C, and leg D. This is leg D. I do not like Ds underneath the previous high. But what we're looking at here is if you look at the weekly of palladium, Aberdeen Physical Palladium, trading at 147.24 right now. I'm going to do this to show you Chapman Wave inside track. This is the uh, red, and now you have the green. Uh, let's do this right now and go green. And there you are. So if palladium on a weekly basis starts to close, right there, starts to close. First of all, it needs to close above 150. If it does that, the 150.64 high of the 12th of the week of the 12th of July will be its left side target. And once it breaks above that, the 152.87 um, most recent is that an all time? I don't know if that's all time high. Yeah, certainly the most recent high that we've got going back many years. Um, that will be taken out, and you will start a leg B to the upside, an overlapping leg B in the Aberdeen Physical Palladium. That's also another good sign. Woo, good signs. Uh, uh, let's see, a question. Uh, it's interesting action. Gold bonds down with dollar down, euro up. Yeah, so um, yes, Jimmy, 14 spy points in eight trading sessions. That is a huge move, no question about it. Um, so just to that question, remember, I, I've been mentioning for some time that I want to keep the dollar gold and bonds as separate things, even if they trade either in similar direction, different number, it doesn't matter. Just think of them differently. The dollar is the currency uh, of, of importance right now as a world currency. The uh, yields are being forced down by international markets, uh, countries that are having to spend money and they, they putting out bonds and forcing bond prices up and yields lower. That, that impacts the United States. And you can see by the monthly chart, it will continue to do that. But maybe on the shorter term, we're getting this really well-deserved breather in yields, yields going up, uh, sorry, bonds, bonds going down, yields going up. And then think of, um, so you've got the dollar, You've got bonds, and then think of gold. Gold is now down 24. 
Think of gold as the currency of fear. That has to do with the whole financial system. It has to do with other things. And if you look at the XLF, so strong right now, up 60 cents at 27.50, still way off the 28.72 high that was made back in August or the 30.33 high back in January 2018. It's just saying, we've got to think of this as a reflex actions, springs that are being unloaded in different directions. I'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi everyone, we're back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pesavento and he's a well, well deserved rest. 120.47 is my automated Chapman Wave resistance points at um, in the SMHs. Uh, we're at 120.32. Uh, the high of the day is 120.41. And uh, we broke the other. So 118.03 uh, is the first real support. And we've got 128.7 in the weekly chart as resistance. So this is going to be very, very close. In my show at noon, we're going to be doing a real, it'll be a most important uh, recovery uh, look. IBB, I was asked about that. That is the uh, NASDAQ Biotech iShares the trading 101.79, up 58 cents. I don't see anything here other than maybe a little bit of a bounce because it's on the 200 period moving average of the weekly chart. If it's not moving strongly right today, 
it's saying that there's a chance that it's just not in the purview of those fund managers that are buying it. I just don't see anything for the IBB. I think it's stuck in that sector, that whole uh, medical area that is uh, debatable right now because of the politics involved. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up because we're just about to go to um, the end of the show. I'm sitting here for Larry. I believe that Steve Rhodes will be doing it tomorrow for Larry. And don't forget, shows all, all day today. I'm back at noon Eastern time for the Tiger Nations Hour. Let me just tell you, INDU. This is the Dow right now is up 406 points at 26,761. Uh, this is very good. There isn't too much resistance other than the automated resistance that I showed you a little earlier. And any pullback, if if the Dow is still holding uh, up 320 to 280 at 130, it's still very good action. It would have to give back at least a half of this gain by this afternoon to say, uh-oh, now we're going to have a bit of a consolidation after a spiral and short covering uh, on some news. Uh, no real test. This just this is emotional news. Um, but we'll see what happens. And we saw that the action in stocks like the Caterpillars, like the, the, the deep cyclicals, the heavy-duty guys, um, that's important that they are running right now. And if the dollar does keep pulling back, the DXY trading right now, oops, I read them there. Just quickly, let me do this. Stay tuned for Tom and Tommy coming up right now. The bull bear market. This is the uh, uh, the bull bull bear binary options hour coming up. Yep. Now the uh, down 33 in the um, in the dollar. So watch the dollar closely. It is helping the commodities. Hope you have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for great programming all session.